the International Association for the Study of Pain defines pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional disorder due to actual or potential tissue damage or expressed in terms of such damage. And that's a very important definition because it lets us see that whilst it's certainly an unpleasant sensation, there is no need for an abnormal result, no need for an abnormal scan or an MRI, and individuals can certainly experience pain in the presence of normal investigations. Acute pain and chronic pain are quite different, quite different entities and most of us are quite familiar with acute pain. It's what I would often term good pain or useful pain. It lets us know that something is wrong. For example, if we sustain a leg injury or a fracture or have an acute appendicitis, we're aware of this acute pain. It's a warning sign, we know something is wrong and we can fix it. Chronic pain, on the other hand, is a useless pain. It doesn't serve any useful function. In many ways it can be considered as a primary disease or a lesion within the nervous system. Most sources would consider that chronic pain actually begins at three months, and this isn't just a number that we pluck out of the sky. At three months, and many studies demonstrate that there are changes both within the function and within the structure of the nervous system occurring. Neuropathic pain or nerve pain is the result of a primary lesion or damage within the nervous system, and it's a very specific subtype of chronic pain. Characteristically, individuals will experience a range of abnormal pains, such as shooting, burning, electric shock-like pain, or a whole range of other abnormal sensations. Nerve pain has a major impact, primarily on the individual, but also on family members and society as a whole. It can often be a very difficult uh, condition to treat and diagnose, and therefore very early and accurate diagnosis for the individual is critically important. We've changed our clinical approach to pain in recent years following the Declaration of Montreal. We now consider chronic pain to be a disease entity in its own right, and as a result of this we need to treat it as a specific disease, much like any other disease process. This has led us to target not only the specific neurological problems with pharmacological and other approaches, but also to identify the impact that this has on a psychosocial level with the patient, and therefore helped us to embrace the input of clinical psychology, occupational therapy and other services. There are a number of challenges with respect to chronic pain. These include challenges to the medical profession, to patients and to society as a whole. Primarily amongst these is a recognition that this is a specific disease which affects a large proportion of the Irish population. We as the medical profession need to be able to recognise and identify this problem, to diagnose it accurately and to offer appropriate treatments. There are a number of changes I'd like to see to improve the quality of life of Irish chronic pain sufferers. Primarily amongst these is a recognition among society as a whole that chronic pain is a disease and that sufferers of chronic pain, like sufferers of other disorders such as diabetes and asthma and epilepsy, have a right to access a range of multidisciplinary services to help treat their pain and improve their quality of life. I would encourage people to visit the mypainfeelslike.ie website to find out more information and also to take the My Pain Feels Like questionnaire.